All right, let's get started here. I want to welcome you here. I'm so glad you've all joined us tonight. My name is Keith Barzulo, and I'm the Dean of the College of Information Studies, or what we call the Info College, here at the University of Maryland. The Info College is focused on two principles in our Dean's Lecture Series. And this is the second Dean's Lecture Series we've now had this year. The first one is a focus on social entrepreneurship. Social entrepreneurship is the developing, funding, and implementing solutions of social or environmental issues. In my college of info, we are also interested in social entrepreneurship that is based on the collection, use, and democratizing access to information. We call this very information entrepreneurship. The second guiding principle is partnership, collaborating with others everywhere, but for us, especially here on Canlands. By combining our strengths and disciplines with others, we're able to together drive positive action to turning data into information that drives that action. So those are the two things, social entrepreneurship and partnerships. Because of that, all of our Dean's Lecture Series this year have been done in partnerships. The last one we did, that was with Dana Potts, was in partnership with the uh, Life School of Journalism. This one is brought to you from our college and also Robert H. Smith School of Business with Dean Abdel Kanana right here in the front. Uh, also, the, uh, the uh, Do Good Institute with Bob Grimm here is the director of the Do Good Institute, and James Stilwell was a faculty director in the Google Institute. So, this, is, uh, this here is itself a partnership. Our speaker tonight is someone who is driving much positive action. I'm honored to introduce Scott Nash, who started a home delivery business of organic foods out of his garage, I hear with $100, some 37 years ago, which has grown into Mont Organic Market. Now with riding business of locations in six states and DC, Mons has made them the commitment to protect the environment, lift up others, and be purposeful. These are valid to align with the pillars of the university's previously forward strategic plan. It enriches plenty of important role in Mons of competence, along with much, much more. Scott is a business entrepreneur, a social entrepreneur, and an information entrepreneur. Tonight's call will show us and challenges and successes, his experience in creating a thriving business while holding true to the mission and the values of doing good. Please join me in welcoming Scott. Thank you, Keith. You can contribute with us, that's fine. Okay, good. So, uh, I'm Anthony Dan Market, um, retail and chain of grocery stores. Um, we have uh, 23. Um, they speak in Mid Atlantic, and most of the we one in Boston. Um, it's been quite a journey um, since 1987. Um, so, people ask me, you know, what, what got me into moms and dad drinks? Uh, you know, I grew up in the area of Italy. Um, in Beltsville, my father was a business profession here. Um, and um, we, um, it, it, when I got into the industry, the, uh, well, my family was, was um, pretty unconventional. Um, and, um, I, you know, and I was always in the food, and I remember my soccer coach telling me, I get the Scott, I'm English here, and people like, but I know it's going to have something to do, so I have no idea I shouldn't do that. Um, but I was, if food is a big deal. Uh, in my family. Uh, and I think our family was also pretty unconventional. Uh, the same for us, um, uh, we challenged conventional reasoning. Um, and it's, it's not a coincidence, but my cousin started our organic foods company on the West Coast. I, I had kind of forgotten that she even did that, she was a distant cousin. Um, it's called the uh, Little Bear Burritos One Chip Company. And, you know, I forgot it until she walked into my little warehouse one day during a um, a convention now you're literally visiting and thought, oh yeah, you live here again, uh, it's a its business too. Um, so there was this sort of like um, something that I kind of backed into, to be honest with you. When I got into it, it was 1987. Um, this is a, 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 a indicative picture of what the industry was like. This is the only organic spaghetti sauce on the market. And it's, it's from Water Edgar, it's this place that's kind of amazing, so Pennsylvania. And they had a meat <laughs> with meat. And right then, everyone in the street was vegetarian. Um, 
And now the industry has grown so much. Oh, it says I go ahead. Uh, and on that note, um, uh, you know, if you go on the spaghetti sauce shelf today, I mean, they can fill this whole wall. Um, and that's how much the industry, you know, it's been like I did in 1987. Um, and, you know, I kind of thank Whole Foods for that. Um, Whole Foods, you know, but they are a competitor. Um, it's easy to compete with Annie Singe's days since they got bought um, by Amazon. Um, but they are what they are, and they really, really were a major disruptor in grocery. Um, and I'm grateful for that. Um, they're very similar to, for example, Starbucks, who disrupted college, you know. It, Hopefully you come in and then made it kind of cool. When I got into it, um, it wasn't very cool. It was really weird. Um, and, and it was in school really cool that, that I faced um, and I did get it. Um, same with like, for example, Tesla electric vehicles. Like, like um, they kind of, you know, they came in and they were weird and they, and to your withstand the big uh, behemoths coming in competitively, uh, they, were, they broadened the uh, market and they just kind of coasted into the challenge. Um, in 1987, um, you know, I was pretty lost. I was 22. Um, I went to school here. I don't read very well. I'm quite impatient. Um, and I just couldn't, um, uh, even my, my dad wrote some books and I held them and I had to try and read them today and I just can't understand what he was really saying uh, back then. Um, um, but I was never very good at school. And I was not a very good employee either. Um, I worked at this place called Fame Exchange. I worked at the bookstore here. Um, I worked at Belfies, Bucks Concessions. Um, I um, worked at Burger King. I worked at Bankies. Like, I worked, at, I had a new job every four months, basically. Um, so, I really feel like um, this business rested me. Um, I, I just wasn't fitting in or finding my place anywhere. Uh, I was straight lost in skill. Um, and I think, by the way, that I, um, I did do wrong school and I wasn't good employees because I really didn't like authority. Um, and I think this is a trait that a lot of entrepreneurs have, is um, we, we um, don't love rules, we don't like being told what to do. And I'll get a little bit into like um, my theory to is that growing up, um, it wasn't the best neighborhood where I grew up in, in Boston at the time. Um, um, and a lot of the authority figures in my life I felt like didn't really deserve the authority that they had over each other, whether it was some teachers or some bosses or some coaches or some neighbors. Um, it like thanks to some degree. You know, they, were, they were very good parents, but they made their mistakes and persons person all kinds of things. I had to scale the village. I couldn't trust authority. Um, and um, I think another trait that entrepreneurs have is that we're big people pleasers. Uh, we we love, I said, I, I guess, I was on a call today with some new hires, and I said, um, I think you're really going to love your job because it's so much fun, it's so satisfying to, to create a great shopping experience for consumers. Um, but it's also fun to spread joy, and, and I you know, like so many in the door before we have open, we actually have a policy where, where we do that. Like, no retailer. It's, I was in a company call a few years ago, and there was 10 out of nine that my office is, and a lot of the games were halfway down, sending a message like, get out. And, you know, and we were just the opposite. I mean, we really value people's time, and we like to really uh, provide what they like to call overwhelming hospitality. Another trade I to know by the way, I think a lot of people think that I can work so, like, kind of crazy risk takers, um, but that's not true. Like, I assess over, I have some theater, and I, I overanalyze. Um, I assessed over scenarios and the risk and the risk assessments. But where we differ, I think, is that we want to bet it all. We'll look, we'll, we'll, I don't know whether they can, but we're, we're willing to go all in on the pot. Um, on that note, you fresh air tomorrow's, um, I was trying to, and I worked for this guy here in, in um, off road on that, you know. Um, this company's called Mr. Arnold. Um, and, um, and I worked at, and I thought he made better almonds than Um And so I went out on my own and started the American Omelette Company. 
And um, it didn't go on, so then I hung to space to And she was like, we had to do lists for me to do things every day, like go to the SBA, go to the restaurant supply. That was a go worse for me. I had a lot of authority, I don't like being told what to do. Um, and I miscalculated this, I didn't understand the all that um, market at the time. Um, and, and, uh, and so I got out of that. And then, and I you guys recognize this buddy. So, so while I was starting my own country, there was a place called Organic Farms Inc. and it was in the industrial center in, in, in Glasgow. And they did wholesale distribution of organic vegetables, um, which was very, very well then. Uh, and they opened to the public on the weekends, Friday and Saturday. And I thought to myself, I'm gonna go work on Friday and Saturday. Uh, I can work 12 hours a day. And I had to get my hours out of the way while I, while I started this um, American Armour company. And um, there was a guy who would come in and, and he was getting them produce. And we became friendly. And the warehouse was well, really cold and, and it was winter time. And, he, and I said, what do you do? And he goes, well, I work for this place called Scott Lurch Shepherd, which is in the Borough of Mince here. And we ship organic produce across the nation. Uh, and I said, we'll try the job, and he said, yeah. Um, so he and I worked for um, Tom Wolf, who I think still owns um, Berlin Heights, uh, the, uh, the Sklonog shop. And uh, we were shipping um, um, uh, footage um, uh, you know, from his basement. Now, the guy who I got the job with, or, or I asked uh, that you get the job, it was his idea. We're packing stuff, setting up a loader, and he says, why don't we start an own company and do a home delivery? I have another car. <laughs> and I said, okay. And so um, um, we went out one night on Montrose Road in Rockville, um, where all the rich people live, and, and we had um, folks that I was under their um, windshield wipers, and uh, the next day, they did it in the middle of the night, um, and then the next day we woke up and there was uh, three or four people burning, buying in the answer machine, and we were we couldn't be more excited. Um, so, so again, back then, like, so we're the new name of ad pros. So I, and I might get back a little bit um, to what I said earlier, but like, um, I, I had dropped out of school, I was starting this company with my friend, and it's organic food. It's, I mean, everybody thought, I got my, there's a still I to say that, that there's a lot of quote prone ideas in the world that later, um, in retrospect, um, were just before their time. I thank God, if you look at grocery, trade material is a dumb idea, right? Well, really the most successful grocery on earth, um, when it comes to sales per square foot, but think of trade materials. The produce is horrible. They have all the anything in there. When you love might not be there next week, quite, they're just so brilliant, they're gonna focus and discipline, and they do such a good job at, at selecting products for us. Cost of another one, another that we don't like to play a dominant brochure. Who would ever think, hey, you gotta pass a membership to shop with us and today, you know, like that, that was an early until the, until the, the uh, young man won, when we already hear buying. So dumb ideas sometimes become um, great ideas in the future. And again, there was lots of naysayers. Had to wear on that. Um, and so, we, but we all do it. And a quick story of interest, especially for this crowd here. Um, I grew up with, with a friend, um, there were, um, Steve Carroll was a professor here as well. And we had have him and my father were business professors. They bought a little house in Maine together. They were, they were almost like relatives. His daughter I grew up with, she um, uh, married a guy when he Scott. And I was reading these books probably about 20 years ago or so. And um, I did a story in here about um, um, the, um, the bullying brother shot very carefully in, in the rear with a beauty gun. I thought, I did that. And, um, and, um, and then I did kind of it kind of um, started to add things up. There's another reference to like the Robin Hood River in one of the books I was reading. And the guy's name is Jeff Kennedy, and, and my family married guy named Scott Kennedy, the draw of McKinley series. And so anyway, um, but I remember being at my house, and she's like, you should see my brother in Hall's drawings that are, they were he's really good, he's a cartoonist. And she showed him to me, and I think I'm like, okay. Um, of course, we all know that this guy became a fight. 
What are you doing going with your life? Um, and it became just an amazing uh, phenomenal for at the University of Maryland. Um, this was the balance of our first customer. So it's my to eat some of July 2nd. Um, they placed an order. Me and my partner delivered. This is Moanville. Um, we were village Rex. Uh, and that was a good DNA of it all. Now my partner, and I'm thinking of that answer machine. Um, um, it was on my mom's hands and I left a recording on it, and it just said something. And he didn't like the recording, and we disagreed. And, um, and I was like, it's not a big deal. Like, and, then, and then he called the answer machine, and I'm having the message pretending to be a customer who could understand the message. And that was the end of that partnership. And, and, and I want to say we had 14 customers to obtain. I bought them after $1,400. Um, but I want to say that anybody's thinking about creating a business, it's serious. Like, it might be great to have a partner, and I'm sure there's people with partners that love their partners, but you might look at me getting married to the person uh, who you're running a business with, because you know, to work out huge problems or, and find your solutions, and you have to spend a lot of time with this person. So I went to and I didn't know what calling mom, and bought my sister was shouting me out the wedding, and I started doing it on delivery. Uh, of the dresses out of my mom's garage in Bellsville. Um, um, I could the a price in it to pay was that to clean out the garage. And then I started to stock it with products that weren't many products available back then. Um, and then we started to, to take orders and, and deliver things uh, through the night. Um, at that time, this is the owner of that small herb shop. And I left on big terms with him. And he called me and said, hey, with, with you gone and this other guy gone, I don't really want to be shipping probes off to people like your Why don't you just take my mailing list? And I said, thank you. And so I was doing home delivery and mail uh, and I grew the business, and then I moved down in my mom's garage in 1988, and this is a little manuscript of spot up, up um, in Vansville, uh, in, in another Bellsville industrial center. Um, there was no, I couldn't afford to do anything. I didn't even have this. Um, that means I didn't go through all the normal things like drawings or health department permitting. It was, I just didn't know how to do that. I just signed the lease and, and, and uh, started doing mail order and home delivery um, out of that space. And this is what it looked like on the inside. This was a really long, long um, knife. I think you're building it. So this is the first only picture of that spot. Things are mainly in this space, which I had a two-year lease at, because 60 minutes did a story on how large it happens. And it set the world on fire with regards to chemicals and shoot. Um, and then Diane Green had a show. She's a local WNU, uh, had, a, had a, a, a famous show here um, about this was and one of my customers called in, Rebecca Jaffe from Vienna, Virginia, uh, who was a delivery customer, and just ran to the rate about how amazing our produce was. Found me out of like, and this was on its way. And then the business journey times, um, they did a review of a box of produce that um, they ordered from us, and they gave it a good review, and so that was national publicity for the mail order business. So business boom. Meaning we went from um, oh, $1,800 a week in sales to $5,000 a week in sales. Um, while I was there, uh, as part of that story, it was we have excited, it was in Fork. Um, I was working in my warehouse all by myself with wine fly eventually. I got to tell you, I'm lonely. Um, and all my fans were, were graduating in college and going to work and having happy hours. And, had it, and I was working at a warehouse by myself, like pretty much 60, 70 hours in a week. Um, and, then the, and then in that time, my brother came up and just kind of banging on the bench and just first going to keep going. This is a picture of and I in that next location that I moved to, which is this one. And this is in my phone. So this is all park on drive. There's a big mural. Uh, we, I moved here in 1990. There's a big mural on the wall, which is still there today. Today it's a tie of sham. Um, and um, uh, I came here because doing home delivery, well, I did home delivery 
uh, together on Monday and Tuesday from delivery on Wednesday and Thursday. And then I would do the public on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I stopped being a football fan because I didn't had to work on my Sunday for like 10 years. Um, and I only got regional audience off when we were created. There was four of them. Um, and so on Mother's Day. <laughs> um, and, um, and so um, I came here and I remember scanning the competitive marketplace and saying, hey, I'm going to help with stores on the ground film. Um, let me ask how much time I have. Just give me a end line a, and tell me. Yeah. Five to ten more? You got it. So I'm um, uh, going ever going up here and I went in and I got the first bullet for um, a cinch and it was like five thousand dollars and I only had like twelve and I just see man was sitting there and stopped because I, I've stuck with this lease now, I'm going to get it open. I ranked up my credit cards, and Fresh Stores was opening their first location up the street. Then I found them out, but not in one time for us on that lease. Things were so bad, and I had to give um, my one employee to my motorcycle, um, and he could assume they were after her, and another dog would go lunch. Um, a friend put a post-it note on, uh, on the place I used to work at the Nan Flowers, who was closing, and everybody came in, and uh, on Friday night, business boom, when the straight go block, and this was the inside of that voice focus on front of us. My mother, I don't know how, she goes to this day, or even to this day, she taught me how to product and store produce. To this day, moms, I'm telling you, that's the best produce of any chain. Did it map? Yeah, going on. <laughs> and it's the thing that, that brings people about, like, I remember hearing, Nine out of ten people are uh, distracted. The number one reason why they go to the food or grocery store is because the quality of the produce keeps them coming back. We got to roll through this. Um, this was the next. We had to close. I was out of business. I lived in it. I had sixty thousand dollars to that, but at least was up uh, in five years. And and um, I held my color counter, getting a stock tip. I put all this money into the stupid stock and I lost almost all of it. So I had to um, really wound up my credit card debt, but we got the doors open. This was the first chill retail play. I didn't have to do mail order or delivery anymore. I sold that for $5,000. Um, and um, and I, was, I love retail to this day. I just couldn't come and get the room insured and I don't need to order it. It was the internet back then. I don't know if it's the editor, take the call or pack it up, but we not all that. Um, that I was saying that we had a tournament fiasco. That was, there was an R letter for me. I thought our twenties were bad. I we sold 60 twenties the night before Thanksgiving. I thought they were bad because one was bad. And I, so I took the few left over, but it was so stressful. Um, back then, I think I'm an offer to, to, to sell my business. And it was for a member, it was a huge amount of money. Um, and then cut out on my bucket is for the guys that went around a million dollars. Um, but I passed. And, and I also grew and, um, um, and I hired a manager to run the store. I thought I was going to quote retire. Turns out I had a drinking problem, um, which came after I um, had too much adamalines. Um, we opened up Class Park right here. That's it on the edge. We did one. There's a sign still there. We're going to get one. Um, and we moved it since then. And then I just became a mechanic. I think Tal, Tal was nice to me. He has a line, me tractor, which he's a specialist in. He, he's a scout in Philly, Montana, and he helped it. I said, You take on more. I, yeah, you've been great to me. Um, so he and I, it's just kind of that, that bad scene, like good karma. Um, that really does them out. This is about a hangry store, a third store. I could do, I could be at two places at once, which was in 2002. Turns out the store was a huge thud. It was listed in city paper as being the best place for dumpster mining in the region because we were throwing out so much food. So I had to pause. I, I said, okay, we've got three stores, we're losing money. Um, and I was just being a hero. Like, I wasn't really being a businessman, I was just working really hard. Then I invited it home. I joined peer groups. 
Couch Express organization is one, Vistage is another, you know, Presence organization. This guy here upon Harnesh is supporting my lab. I plugged into his own network and he plugged my team into his own network. I didn't play to none of my moms by myself by any means. Uh, matter of fact, I just sit there and ask questions and make them item with each other. And then they come, and me and I do have to make it a rolling hand, like, but they're the ones who figure it all out. Um, uh, and this is a very, I really believe this five years from now, you are the same person as you are today, except for the books you read and the people you meet. Um, we still to read books. I got them my, my MBA, let's just say, the organic way, and uh, this book um, was a great book. At the time, in really great issue, I think it was the first of its type, um, and I launched a whole series of business books going forward. It, there's a chapter, and it talks about do something with your business, make it, make it a good thing. We created no purpose, we're already starting to get through, a great for the environment. We decided to double down and really become an environmental company. We created core values. I was telling someone out of love that Adam on all of that. Um, and lots of core values were respect, integrity, sustainability, and you know, there's a lot of company. Like, 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 they're not wish list, they're not something to start to go up on the wall. Um, ours are very mindful based, we speak to the whole person. Um, this is our brand promise, very powerful. I talked about the produce, the service. Uh, we we uh, uh, teach reality, a lot of groceries, mostly women, and it's mostly women who, who say to talk about for the women, and 90% of our revenues come from women. So we do everything we can for women. Um, and we know that we study them. We love both on, on what, how they like to shop, and they really appreciate structural issues. They need some coming without anybody even hearing that. And you don't know my arms, we'll see the arms are really wide because women don't want to be even right to them. They don't even worry about anybody walking close to them. Um, this is Storch 4 and 5, I was probably younger. Um, I had to learn how to be CEO. A uh, book that was another book that was very funny. This is what's helped me. One book memoirs, Steve Jobs' his book, uh, I wrote about my interview about what draws it. So, how to make it fair to find me was a CEO. Not my middle manager, but I pay his great attention to detail. Uh, right now, there's a, and, and one of the women I have coffee, I stand in my stores, you know, and we have a client to you know, so, so there's, uh, out of problem with everything was customer experience, really. Merchandising, uh, we have to pause. This is a Bowie store. Uh, it puts all in math, literally, like, like those last, Four or five stores almost pushed out of business or so, but Billy was actually opening up the bank, was busy at Billy this day. So now, yeah, well, this is really happening. We have stores from, from uh, Virginia to Boston with uh, four coming up this year. You can tell me a little bit about what it's like to be a um, central business in COVID. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was difficult to start my business up. Supply chain, people don't do so good when they're afraid. Um, and um, there was so much, so much humanity to deal with, and that was just that. There was also um, a timing of the general employees, something or something of them locked off the job overnight, while sales doubled, um, and we couldn't even get the proxy. Um, and I mean, you know, suddenly we had no masks. Where do we get masks? Like um, we paid. $10 for a mask at one point. Um, um, and there was just, we, 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 we hovered daily on the University of Timonite for two years to get through that. Um, this is the last one or two much on it. Um, this is just a bunch of me from the summer. I was here on the left. He, 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 he runs a new morning farm. He was the guy who was delivering to me in 1990. Um, he, new morning farm, he has farmers packets up in uh, Northwest DC. Um, and I ran into him recently, you know, 35 years later, um, actually first met and took this picture that he still in it. Um, that was where I had um, where am I going, where's the models going? I question myself all the time. A founder is not always, you know, investors will set sound-led companies for good reason. Well, I always have to question my capabilities. I don't want to be the person that will always go on to my mom's deserves to be coast to coast. A lot of people think, 
Good is bad. I don't think good is bad. I think bad is a bad. And if you're great, it's be be you. It's take over. Like if you're saw panels, whatever it is, I believe that the game of minds is the better it is because we educate so many people, we touch so many lives on sustainability. Um, and we feel like this is our our, our one of the sort of lily that was still trainer James, Wolf is an ass, case successful, we can be successful. We each have our businesses. Um, we, the sum of our business scores are the shadows of, of these companies. So that's where all fuses uh, map is. This is Trader Joe's, and we feel like, again, if, you know, I'm quality of editing. So I think a lot of companies grow, and a few race. Um, and, and they're too risky. They, the Jim Collins says, fight a ball before you fire a can, like, like test your mind at first. Um, so I'm very um, conservative, cautious growth plan um, because I don't want it to end in some culture where I'm racial excellency. Um, yet, I feel personally responsible for minds um, being all that it can be. And so I'm always looking at my other right person for that. And so I have to always develop myself and have, have my mistake back. That's all I have. Thanks.